Alright, so hey guys, welcome to another Warframe video, and Barakatiyar has come once again, and on PC is on the current area lay on Saturn. Now, the new item this time around is the Machete Siakit skin, which really, really doesn't look like a machete. Look at it, it looks more like something you would play Lonaro with. Luckily though, it looks like a very cool thing that you would play Lonaro with, it's just a dope skin, so there you go. Next on the menu, we have Fanged Fuselage for 120% bonus slash damage on rifles, and then we have the three rare stances for melee weapons. So we have Vermilion Storm for claws, we have Astro Twilight for glaives, and finally Tempo Royale for heavy blades. And then we have two Pride mods. So we have Pride Cry Rounds for plus 165% bonus core damage on rifles, and Pride Heated Charge for plus 165% bonus heat damage on secondary weapons. Following that, we have one of my personal favorite primary weapons, the Prisma Grinlock, which is a Mastery Rank 11 lever action rifle. It does a ton of damage per shot, it's very accurate, it does mostly slash, though there is quite a bit of impact as well. It has good crit chance, very high crit multiplier, and extremely high status. So that was the good weapon, and now on to the bad one, the Machete Wraith. This thing is just mastery fodder. It's mastery rank 1, it does do primarily slash, but it has almost no crit, and the status is very low as well. So unless you want to get the mastery from this, this weapon is just a no. Then we have a full set of the Prisma Deodos armor, so we have both the knee plates, the shoulder plates, as well as the chest plate, and this is just a very good looking set of armor that's been in the game for a very long time. It's a Prisma set of armor, so you have the Prisma energy flowing through it, I know, duh, right? But none of the pieces are just too, like, over the top, right? Most of them will fit onto most frames. Even the chest plate, which is usually the problem because it sticks out, this one is pretty flat, so it fits most Warframes and it doesn't look weird. Then he once again brought the Domus Siandana, which is a very dinky looking Siandana, which is why I personally don't like it, but it doesn't look half bad, it's just that I don't like dinky Siandanas, but, you know, it's just a little light set with a very long tail, so if you like that kind of look, you might want to pick it up. Next up, we have the Katir Kavat armor, just don't, don't do this to your Kavat, please, it's animal cruelty, look at the hat, my god, and this is followed up by the much better looking Prisma Rostam Kubro armor. Now this one, I like. This one looks really good, even with a standard Kubro skin, but when you combine it with the new Kubro skin that you can get with Wukong Prime Access, which is the one I'm using, mwah, magnifique. Moving on from there, we have the Mirage Immortal skin, which is probably my favorite Immortal skin. It will fit onto both the standard Mirage as well as Mirage Prime, and it actually does look pretty damn good on the Mirage Prime, and it's just a really cool looking skin. It kind of reminds me of the original Harley Quinn, so it's just a great skin. After that, we have the Katir Sagatra, which is just a small cosmetic accessory for your melee weapon that will sort of dangle off the handle or both handles if you are dual wielding and it can be colored separately to the melee weapon. Then he once again brought the Katir Tribute Glyph, which is exactly what you would expect and what it says on the tin, a Katir Tribute Glyph that looks pretty damn good. And we are slowly nearing the end with Burrow's Nogo Statue, which is also exactly what you would expect and what it says on the tin, Burrow's Nogo Statue. Then he brought a Captura scene, more specifically the Orokin Tower Extraction scene, which is, well, the extraction room. It doesn't have any of the side rooms, it's just the main extraction room. Then the second to last item is a 3-day affinity booster, which isn't really worth buying because it's much better if you just farm prime junk by cracking relics, you sell that prime junk to players and you buy the booster from the market. And the final item is as always the Sons of Inaros questline blueprint, which is the item you need if you want to get the Inaros Warframe. Now my recommendation this time around is extremely straightforward, get Primed Cry Rounds and get Primed Heated Charge, those two mods are extremely strong. And if you want to get a very cool lever action rifle, get Prisma Grinlock as well. The three melee stances are actually pretty easy to get nowadays because they drop from multiple enemies and Fanged Fuselade drops from the Hydrolyst, so you can farm it by doing Tridalon runs. And everything else, aside from Machete Wraith, which is just not very good, is cosmetic. But then again, this is just my personal recommendation, so if you want to go for the swag and cosmetics first, go right ahead. And that is pretty much it for Baro this week, so I thank you very much for watching. As always, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I will see you on Monday. Bye-bye.